episode of BEA Conversations, we speak with Christina for sale of 8th Wave Events and Destinations on how to face competition in an environment without certainty. Christina shares her thoughts and how her agency plays on their strengths. Well, I mean, of course, we are at core a uh, have been a, an international type of um, destination agency so the competition that we have had has not just been limited to the one in Singapore you know it's been in you know basically from all over the world uh, and uh, our core markets of course so uh, with of course the borders closing um, the competition has shifted uh, we do not have um, the same partners anymore as well so it's it's of course it's been um, quite a shift quite a big big change for us um, but uh, of course there's opportunities as well and uh, you know we have been working a lot with uh, number one of course looking inside and you know how can we do things differently um, how how can we uh, manage ourselves um, in you know long term you know to to put different products uh, in there for the future and uh, you know not just staying competitive not just staying relevant but finding um, ways to still be the unique kind of boutique agency that we have always been but in a different way so you know that that's been one of the things that we've been working with um, for that yeah as a leader, mm. what is the attributes needed to face fierce competition? Mm. Because it's, it's hard, it's not easy. It is hard. Um, I think one of the really strong things about being a boutique agency is that we do have um, a smaller team and we create very close, tight-knit relationships. Uh, I think um, being able to work with that has been one of the, the key points that I think is moving us forward and is helping us. Um, I think uh, the challenges might be also that, you know, with the type of work that we do, um, it's been really, well, we, we try to invest in our people and uh, not just because we don't have cookie cut kind of uh, products and so you know it's there's there's a long process of not just understanding our ethos and our values and who we are and why we do things and why we're passionate about things but also there's product knowledge in terms of you know the destinations or uh, various technical things and it takes a long time it's not something you just do overnight and of course in this kind of a scenario now um, talent retention mm. is, is a huge thing, you know, that's a, a challenge for, for me uh, as a leader and, uh, you know, I want to keep my team intact and I enjoy them so much, you know, so this, um, this is definitely something that, yeah, we think about. How, how have you, over the years, trained your mind uh, to be mentally prepared for situations where possible? Oh, wow. Um, I think a large part of that answer is going to be how I grew up, mm -hmm. um, in a sense. I mean, I, I did not grow up, you know, in, in, in a single country, just, you know, like that. So, I, you know, through my life, I've had to move a lot. I've had so many different types of, of job experiences, you know, I've traveled all my life um, and, and had to adapt a lot to the various different situations in different countries and situations and jobs and I think having the mindset that yes I can do that yes it's possible you know it's more about having your own core and knowing what you stand for um, and being able to project that and work with that I think is more important than sort of being afraid of losing the status quo mm. I think that's really helped mm. and so I mean I, I, I am I when, when we first met, you told me about your uh, the different countries that you grew up in, the different cultures that you were ex uh, uh, exposed to that mm. make you so adaptable. And how how do you think, um, as we are f f facing you know difficult challenges, 
to to balance the unrealistic um, expectations and the the realistic um, expectations of ourselves. You mean the from internal how we? Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, yeah. Because I think sometimes we all have dreams. We are all dreamers. We are all creative. In, in True. This, in, you know, and often people might say when you know sometimes when I Google, I I, I I read something like, if you can dream it, you can make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> Which well, is such a dangerous thing. That's a say. dangerous thing. No, sure. But yeah. I think we need to. I mean, I, I personally, I would probably subdivide that into two. I mean. Dreams are one thing, you know, you, you can always have aspirations and I mean if you don't want to go somewhere, you know, and have that goal, you can never get there because you're not even going to start. But then being realistic about that um, is not negative, yeah. I think, you know, you, you have to also understand what are the realistic sort of, uh, you know, constraints that are there, you know, yeah. and, and not beat yourself up about not being able to go there maybe right now because it just doesn't mm. work right now mm. or or, mm. or maybe yeah i want to be an astronaut I, you know that's what i said when i was seven years old you know mm. pff, yeah that's a dream mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. might not be so realistic yeah. right and and i guess you can apply that to many different uh, mm. situations and mm. i think you know being nice to yourself is really important too you know so yeah yeah we are so used to you know you know, being business owners and leaders that, you know, we show a strong front, mm -hmm. you know, of course yeah. there will be, we all go through moments of doubt, of course. Uh, moments of beating ourselves up and so forth. How do you, when you experience those moments, how do you pick yourself up? Yeah. Um, besides reading a book with a good glass of wine. Uh, <laughs> um, and what no. sort of book would you read if, if you do that, oh, if you go through that? I, I love books that have, that take history, good research, but sort of put it into a personal experience, not necessarily a real person, but it could be a fictional person, mm. um, like um, Cambodia during, you know, the, the uprising with the Khmer, you know, the, the entire um, process there, or Vietnam, or some other country, to sort of get into a first per person point of view and understanding what it was like to live through these things. And I think understanding that when I create travel experiences mm. for my clients, mm. it helps me to put things into a perspective and find point of views mm. that you know I can share with them. And you know, that's part of the reason why. I love the industry, you know, is is all of that. So that's one definite, you know, part. But if you if you're looking at um, your question in general, how do I pick myself up? Mm. Um, I think uh, there's always another day tomorrow. Uh, understanding that, well, yeah, things might not be wonderful right now, mm. you know. Mm. But trying to look at it a little bit long term, trying to figure out, you know. Is it all bad? What are the opportunities? Uh, how can I create something out of this? How do I turn it around? Um, you know, trying to find a positive spin to it. I yeah. think that is what mostly really picks me up. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to find that kind of, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, there is also a lot of, um, you know, uh, saying in terms of, you know, as we climb up to leadership it gets lonelier and lonelier and so forth so when mm -hmm. you when you have moments of doubt and picking up yourself um, are you the kind of leaders that sort of say okay I'm gonna open up to a circle of you know uh, people that I can bounce my my, my ideas off mm -hmm. or I completely just go into my book reading and <laughs> self-research kind of mode what worked for you I would say Probably in two steps. I probably, I think, uh, for me personally, there was an initial stage where I sort of needed that internal mm -hmm. reflection first. Mm -hmm. um, but very much, um, I've had some team members mm -hmm. that I've been very lucky to to work with, and uh, you know, who have ideas and who are great to bounce things off. And we have a very open office kind of atmosphere where 
we try to have the, you know, no idea is a bad idea, especially if you're brainstorming, you know. Um, so we try to bring that to the table and that I think has helped a lot. Mm. Mm. Was there fear when you sort of like open up, let's say to your team members and we all have a different spectrum of life experiences that the unknown and the when you're in sort of like, oh my God, I need to talk this out, that might we might induce a bit of fear to mm. our team members unnecessarily? Actually, on the contrary. Um, I feel the greatest uh, feeling was excitement um, that we were going to try something new that we were going into different ways you know how can we explore this yay we get to train uh, on something new and um, you know take part in the development and do something so absolutely no I don't think it was fear um, it was much more the excitement and and I think being enabled to be part of that development and to do the research and do the training and you know find the outlets and do the marketing and kind of mm. yeah so I think it's been more of a growing experience yeah. rather than fear. I'm so glad you say that because more often than not when people are in a pickle they they fear that oh my god you know whether it's showing vulnerability or sharing their ideas they, they might lose their IP or anything like that they are mm. often stuck in a in a in a in a, in a gap mm -hmm. of what to do. Yeah, uh, yeah, they yeah. are frozen in time. So mm. to, to hear that it sparks yeah. inspiration, then Absolutely. fear uh, is so comforting. I mean, I can give you a couple of examples. I mean, um, obviously with uh, travel not being on the radar, you know, um, it became clear very very early on that mm. uh, within the events industry, you know, virtual and hybrid events were going to be. The next big thing and as we have all found you know it's not just the next big thing it's here to stay mm -hmm. you know there is we're not going to go back to a, a pure face-to-face -face model I don't think any time because of the huge technological advancements and the realization that there's so many other benefits that can be added to events even though face-to-face is of course you know cannot be replaced you know no way but the fringe is always going to be there. Mm. So knowing and understanding that, you know, very early on, you know, and, and being able to get the uh, buy-in from the team that this was really exciting and with so much technological advancement, uh, you know, to create an entire new, well, let's say division of the company in that sense, you know, to, to become a digital events manager, understanding what's out there, what are the platforms, which one is good, you know, what are the solutions, and then being able to turn around and, and say to our clients, listen, you know, we can do this, and these are, you know, we're, we can help you with, you know, basically uh, creating this kind of an event for you. So that was one, you know, very exciting journey that we made um, together um, and then the other one is you know I think we were just uh, talking a little bit about that earlier is um, you know the new tours that the mm. Singapore like rediscovers you know and that's not really something we were doing so much before because you know we were doing the mice uh, perspective kind of um, and I'm thinking so how can we work with this from our perspective like how do we how do we create something which sort of resonates with our ethos, will work with our types of clients, not just now uh, in a domestic sense, but later. Mm. So we've actually created a new sort of um, little company called Perspectives. Mm. Yeah, um, so that's going to be domestic tours, but not just, not right now, of course, it's Singapore, but we're going to be rolling that out oh, um, to, to different um, countries. And the thing about it is that, you know how, how when you develop something right you know going back to to what we are saying um, how, how this has been exciting because now what we're doing is we're looking at something which we might have done with inbound clients to different destinations and they're trying to to look at this and from different there for the name perspective um, you know how is it that we can bring in like you know, what's the social aspect of it? Mm. Not just the historic, like, for example, how do we relate that to today? Mm. Take an example, for example, there's one tour we're working on, uh, which is um, working, you know, looking at coolies and colonials. And coolies, you know, they were paid 
daily they had these little coolie tokens and it was essentially a gig economy mm. you know how does that relate to the gig economy mm. today mm. pandemics you know the the parallels between things like oh, that wonderful. you know so you know that's the kind of um, you know, a different look at things and not just a historical tour mm. um, so you know this is something you know again the team is really excited about and going out and researching and you know doing things so yeah that is so powerful mm. that is thank you for sharing that because I think that is very very empowering to be able to refer to some historical moments and put into Content, sense, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. that, that what we are going through right mm -hmm. now is highly relatable, and mm -hmm. that's why people um, engage experts like yourselves to be able to say, "Hey, we gain a different perspective. Mm -hmm. We gain a different. Oh, wow! I, I, I can remember this part of Singapore a lot better because of the story and mm -hmm. yeah. how you related and and connected connected the dots." Uh, at that point in time, so that is absolutely wonderful. Mm, yeah, that's what we're hoping. One final question. Sure. Why is mental fitness important to you? Well, I think if you're not happy yourself, it's very difficult to have a happy team. I think it's um, very difficult to to have a happy family. To you know, I, there, it just touches everything. Um, having said that mental health is um, sometimes not something you choose mm. and you know you really need to be aware that people need help sometimes even though they don't speak out mm. and uh, it's very important to be supportive mm. and understand that you know people can go through rough times um, and it might just not be a short thing you know it could be a it's long journey yeah yeah, yeah. So, importance of both, I think, being, you know, helpful, understanding, and happy all at one time. Sounds very, very balanced. Mm. Thank you so much once again for My your pleasure. insight. It's such a pleasure talking to you, Chris. Likewise. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.